Revo Labs wireless microphones are not affected by the FCC changes, period. Our wireless mics operate in the 1.9 gigahertz range, not the 700 megahertz range. Revo Labs wireless microphones have no problem. Bosch Communication Systems, a business unit of Bosch Security Systems, is now one of the world's leading manufacturers and suppliers of professional audio, wireless, life safety, and communication equipment. Bosch Communication Systems offers complete system solutions for the world's most critical high-profile installations and events. Together, the future sounds secure. Reading the popular press, you might get the impression that it's all over for wireless microphones. This isn't true. Sabine has been producing a microphone system, the SWM7000, for more than five years that operates an entirely different frequency band that is completely unaffected by these recent changes. The SWM7000 meets the most stringent professional requirements for sound quality. In addition, it offers 70 simultaneous channels. Sabine's SWM7000 series wireless microphones operate in the 2.4 gigahertz band. Sabine has also recently received approvals from our testing agency that permits us to begin production of a new series, the SWM6000, that will be similar but transmit in the 915 ISM band. This is also outside of the digital TV changeover. It's not the end of the world. Sabine has a solution and we're shipping now. Welcome back to Sound and Communications Viewpoint. We're continuing our conversation about wireless microphone technology and its effect, how it's being affected by the White Spaces Initiative that the FCC has uh, just given the go-ahead for. We've talked about uh, spectrum, uh, spectrum sensing technology. Um, there's another technology that they're going to try to use called geospatial location in an online database. What that is is the devices will have a GPS in them and it'll tell them where they are in the world and it'll on access an online database that will tell them what frequencies they can't use in that specific area. So uh, wireless microphone users are not, we're, it's not incumbent on us then to find out who's using these devices, it's on them to... That's correct. The problem that I see is, is that who's going to police that? Who's going to know that if my wireless microphone gets stepped on in a broadcast, who's going to find out or who's going to find out what happened or why that happened and right. be able to effectively fix that for the next time? Because of the mobile nature of these new devices, um, is there any uh, other burden being put on the, the wireless, manu uh, wireless microphone users to kind of define their space? And is the FCC trying to look out for them uh, more aggressively? Um, I don't believe that the FCC is going to look out for them more aggressively. I think they do say that they're going to do aggressive testing on these devices before they allow them to come onto the market. Um, I think, though, that wireless microphone manufacturers are going to have to step up their game a little bit better and use kind of their own spectrum sensing technology, which some of them already have that capability. Um, but to more keep wireless mics in separate channels from each other, not so much looking beyond their family of products, right? Right, right. Um, yeah, it, it, currently it's we're looking for we're looking for televisions and we're looking for other wireless mics. Is yes, so that's true. So at this point, we've got technology that's supposed to be implemented by these providers. We've got a segment of bandwidth that we're now sharing. Um, my, I've got a question. Uh, I, I, there there are wireless microphone manufacturers that don't manufacture devices that work in the UHF range. Does that this affect them at all? Uh, certainly. The, the new devices do not have to be licensed either. They just have to be approved by the FCC, just like a wireless microphone does. Okay, um, But what we think is going to happen is that now wireless manufacturers are going to have to at least register with this online database. My, my question so. more went to if the, the, the point that if you have a wireless device that doesn't share the 700 megahertz band, there are manufacturers who build in the 2.4 gig range than the 1.9 gig range, that th these shouldn't be affected by the, by the use of the sub-700 megahertz devices that are going to be probably all over the place if they're uh, popular consumer goods. 
That's true. Those devices are not affected by this initiative at all. But the broad uh, uh, market for wireless mics currently is in that UHF range. Absolutely. Uh, and going forward, uh, the FCC has a lot less uh, TV broadcast down in the VHF range. And manufacturers may take a step backwards and start producing more in the VHF band. So VHF may make a comeback yes. for wireless microphone users. VHF is going to be greatly freed up of uh, television channels due to the digital television transition. Uh, in the low band, channels 2 through 6, uh, there's probably only going to be less than 50 stations in the entire nation that will be in that frequency band. Uh, there's going to be a sizable number more in the 7 mm -hmm. to 13 band, okay. but still nowhere near. They've reduced it by over 30%. Now, as I understand it, these devices, these new uh, unlicensed devices, still can live in the VHF band, too. So, so be, do we know what the range is from, uh, from the bottom to the top of the range where these devices are going to be allowed to be used? Well, any, anywhere, I think it's... Uh, what is it, channel 7, all the way up through 14 or 13 in the VHF band, and then 14 through 52 in the UHF band. Yeah, UHF starting at 470 megahertz, channel 14. Uh, VHF high band is uh, 7 through 13. Uh, both of these appear to be, you know, considered fair game. Yeah. Well, that's it for this edition of Sound and Communications Viewpoint. I'd like to thank Jerry Budge, Darren Cheshire, uh, for their time today in discussing the wireless microphones and the digital transition. Um, please join us next month where we have a discussion about how the transition affects integrators and our customers. I'm Jay Paul. Thank you.